uh, on a call a week ago. You said it's time to put Trump in the bullseye. There's some dispute about the, the context, but I think you appreciate that I didn't say crosshairs. I was talking about focus on. Look, the truth of the matter was, what I guess I was talking about at the time was, there was very little focus on Trump's uh, agenda. Yeah, the term was bullseye. It was, a, it was a mistake to use the word. I didn't, I didn't say crosshairs. I meant bullseye. I meant focus on him. Focus on what he's doing. Focus on, on, his, on his policies. Focus on the number of lies he told in the debate. Focus. I mean, there's, there's a whole range of things that, look, I'm not the guy that said <clears throat> I want to be a dictator on day one. I'm not the guy that refused to accept the outcome of the election. I'm not the guy who said that one accept the outcome of this election automatically. You can't only love your country when you win. And so the focus was on what he's saying and, I mean, the idea. Hey there, my name is Debori Darkens. Welcome back to my channel. And in today's video, we're going to be actually uncovering the historic rhetoric from the president of the United States over the last few years that in some cases has definitely program citizens out there to view Trump as an official threat to America. And as a result, which we are unable to confirm at this moment, whether or not the shooter from that failed uh, assassination attempt on Saturday, um, uh, you know, bought into this rhetoric, but it doesn't really matter because I'm going to show you what people are saying because of what he has said and how the true threat to democracy, by the way, is not actually in the vision of what someone may have for the country, because that doesn't mean the vision can actually come true, but in the actual statements that are repeatedly said on social media and in public and in official um, places, just like at the State of the Union, and then echoed with other citizens and backed up by the media, how that truly is a threat to democracy because you're programming people to turn in, to, to use violence in the end, ultimately, because that's the end conclusion. Because sooner or later, if you keep saying someone is a threat, they're a threat, they're a threat, what is the next logical step? To neutralize the threat. And threat is usually in the context of what? Combat, tactics, right? Law enforcement, military. You're not even cybersecurity, right, which is more non-physical, but using the word threat with political rhetoric, you know, every now and then I could see that. But when you keep saying it over and over and over again, this is exactly what you get. But have, have you s s taken a step back and done a little soul searching on things that you may have said that could incite uh, people who are not balanced? Well, I, I don't think, look, how do you talk about the threat to democracy, which is real, when a president says things like he says? Do you just not say anything because it may incite somebody? Look, I, 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 I've, I have not engaged in that rhetoric. Now, my, my, my opponent is engaged in that rhetoric. He talks about to be a bloodbath if he loses, talking about how he's going to forgive all the, uh, uh, actually, for, I guess, suspend the sentences of all those who were arrested and sentenced to go to jail because of what happened in the Capitol. I'm not out there making fun of, like, when, remember the picture of Donald Trump when Nancy Pelosi's husband was hit with a hammer, going, talking about, joking about it? Now, before I continue and show you all of these tweets and, and the, his, the history of this and how other people have been responding, you know what to do, like, share, and subscribe. So let's dive into this. So this goes back to December 20th, 2023, almost 9 million views. What does he say verbatim? Trump poses many threats to our country, the right to choose, civil rights, voting rights, and America standing in the world. But the greatest threat he poses is to our democracy. If we lose that, we lose everything. Now, on the surface, you may say, well, I get it. You know, it's political. You know, they're just saying what they say. Of course. Yeah. Right. Got it. Got it. I, I could see that. And people, of course, will push back. Um, but what happens if he keeps saying that? Right. What happens if he keeps saying that? Well, let's take a look at it. 
um, right here, June 28th of this year, Donald Trump is a genuine threat to this nation. He's a threat to our freedom. He's a threat to our democracy. He's literally a threat to everything America stands for. 13 million views. Donald Trump is a threat to our democracy. This was July 5th, just July 5th, and we cannot let him win. I'm in Madison, Wisconsin, talking to folks about what's at stake in this election. Tune in. Okay, got it. And then someone also did a screenshot of this crazy rhetoric right here. Donald Trump and MAGA Republicans are a threat to the very soul of this country. So but he's, what he's saying is, I am a threat. I'm a threat. I'm a guy. I served 13 years in the military. I joined when I was 17. I'm married. I have a son. I have my own business. I employ people. I love my country. I love that I serve. Um, I do believe this is the greatest nation in the world, and I believe it could be greater. Um, I believe we can make it great again. So having said all that, I am a threat to the very soul of this country, right? I am a threat. Got it. That's what he wants people to believe. Right? Look at this. Donald Trump is the greatest threat to our democracy. Donald Trump is a genuine threat to this nation, right? Donald Trump is a threat to our democracy. Trump poses many threats to our country, right? This It just goes on and on and on, okay? It just goes on and on and on. And it just shows you the contempt that he has. And he has yet to actually remove any of these uh, quotes or these tweets. So you can always go on here and actually see it. And let me show you guys a little trick. If you actually go to X and you go to the search uh, box, if you type in the word from and then the uh, colon here, and then you got to put the person's actual username, not their name, but their username. So if I do Joe Biden and then space and then put the keyword. So I'm going to put threat. Watch what pops up. Look at that. September 1st, 2022. Donald Trump, MAGA Republicans are a threat to the very soul of this country. Boom. 2019, the threat Donald Trump poses to our national security, right? 2023, Trump poses many threats, right? We already read that. Here's another one. Attempting to abuse powers by conspiracy and our threat to the character of our nation. Um, oh, he finally mentions climate change, right? You, you, you would think they would probably mention climate change as a bigger threat than Donald Trump, but of course they don't do that. And they definitely will never say that, you know, North Korea or Russia or Iran or China are bigger threats than Donald Trump, right? They, they spend so much of their energy focusing on him. And here's the actual big mistake that has been happening uh, over the past uh, four years. This is a classical error with tactics, by the way. Not, is, this isn't just politics. This is actually life. When you give your energy to something, it grows. That's one. That's rule number one. Rule number two, uh, when you try to force, it negates. Meaning when you try to force something, it blows up in your face, okay? And so let's go back to rule number one. They've been focusing on him so much. What has happened? He's gained more attention. Because remember, after the election, uh, after the 2020 election, and then the impeachment, and then there was a few more months of him getting public attention. But after that, he kind of died out. Not like he gave up, but the attention that he had, right? The, the, the attention that he demanded went out the window, right? And so what did the Democrats do? What was their first mistake? They went after him. They started talking about him again. They started giving him more energy, more attention. And as a result, the base started to expand, started to galvanize. His rallies continued to get bigger. His voice got louder. And people continued to cover him. And because the Democrats would, would not stop talking about him, and as a result, it leads to rule number two, which is if you force something, it blows up in your face. So then they tried to force the American public to turn against Donald Trump. They tried to force uh, the legal system to lock him up. They tried to force him to quit. They tried to force people to listen to the media and take every word the media says as fact. And as a result, it's been blowing up in their face. And this is what happens in life. So it's, it's just really, really sad. Now, let's actually go back here. I'm going to show you what happens when people are following this type of rhetoric over time. Um, as you guys can see, you don't have to agree with me on everything to know MAGA extremism is a threat to this country, right? But let's actually go back here. It's sad that a 20-year-old ended his life for Donald J. Trump, right? 
This is their reaction. Here's another one. It's a shame they missed. Right. So so do you see any conservatives going out there publicly and using language like this? Do you see any conservatives out there publicly calling for the, the destruction of, let's say, Paul Pelosi, which was Nancy Pelosi's husband, who he's not running for any type of office, but we could still use him as an example. Did you see any conservatives say, darn, I wish that guy succeeded in killing him? No. Uh, let's see here. Let's let's look at another one. That shooter has got to be the most universally hated cunt on the planet right now. And this person put right like, bro, work on your skills. OK, got it. Ridiculous. Uh, here's another one. Looks like he almost got taken out. And then she put uh, somebody comment. Damn it. They missed. And then she put, oh, my, my thoughts. Exactly. Right. This and these people are in leadership positions. These are teachers. These are professors. Some of these people are actually elected officials at the local level. Uh, here's another one. Uh, black people are not revealing uh, or revealing in violence. I don't know what she meant by that. We are wishing for the death of evil. We are longing for the prevention of evil. For a moment on Saturday, we held our collective breath. We were suspended in uncertainty, caught between desperation and hope, asking what if. And the title is, Is He Dead? Why black people are not grieving the failed assassination of Donald Trump. Okay, well, let me tell you something right now. Um, you don't speak for me. Uh, I am black. My mother is black. My father is black. My grandmother is black. So there's no question that I am a black person in this country. And I am definitely disappointed, grieving, and sad, and also frustrated that the Secret Service allowed this to happen to a former president. It doesn't matter that his name was Donald Trump. It could, it could have been President Biden. It could have been Barack Obama. It could have been George Bush. I don't care. How could someone get away with even attempting to assassinate someone at that level? And you want to make it about race. This is what's wrong with these people. They're sick. They have a, it's like a virus in their mind. You know, they want to make everything about the color of someone's skin instead of what it really is. Right. Uh, let's let's keep going here. Uh, oh, here's another one. Uh, black Americans need to make an exit plan for the U.S. ASAP incoming Trump landslide and dictatorship. Dictatorship. Got it. I know we can't all be saved, but you need to con you need to make concrete exit plans now. So where where are we supposed to go? Right. Where where should I go? Right. So I should, you know, find ways to get another citizenship somewhere else. OK. OK. That makes total sense. Got it. Got it. Um, look at this person and leave the house that my people built. I think not. Don't underestimate racist whites. They will steal from you and not care. Yeah. So this person again, woke mind virus for sure. And that is what happens. Okay. This is what happens when you have this constant rhetoric about someone is the threat to democracy. Now here's the pushback that you'll hear. Well, Donald Trump, he has said some things too. Uh, you know what? That is true. He has said some things. But let me tell you something. He has not continued to repeat the words threat to democracy, threat to the soul of our country, a threat, 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 threat. Now, I'm not here to say that he's never used that word. I know he's used that word. But if we were going to compare the amount of times he used that word versus Joe Biden, it's not a comparison. And not just Joe Biden, but Nancy Pelosi. Right. Hakeem Jeffries, Chuck Schumer. Right. We can go down the list. Right. Because the Democrats, one thing they always have going for them is they all sound the same. Their message is always the same. And the message over the last four years as is, is that he needs to be stopped. And a matter of fact, matter of fact, hold on, let's let's go back to this other classical one that they already uh, deleted. I have one job, and that is to beat Donald Trump. I'm absolutely certain I'm the best person to be able to do that. So we're done talking about the debate. It's time to put Trump in a bullseye now. You don't have to be an idiot to understand that, obviously, um, you know, he's he may not be meaning literally. Right. But it doesn't matter because words have meaning. And as a politician, you may not mean it. But it doesn't matter. Your followers think you mean it and your followers take that word and turn it into something that maybe you did not attend. And let's. Let's, you know, because I'm a person that loves doing this. Let's give him the benefit of the doubt. Let's say he didn't mean it. It still doesn't matter. Why are you talking like that? 
as the president of the United States. Now, instead of saying threat, you could easily just say, hey, listen, if you want, you know, freedom with your body, vote for me. He doesn't have to come out and use fear based tactics. And that's what they've tried to do over the last four years is use fear based tactics to get people to vote. And people are waking up to that and rejecting that type of rhetoric now. But you still have some of those delusional people out there who thought it was very smart to react on social media about the failed assassination attempt and almost celebrate it um, as far as um, the person being able to even take a shot in the first place and that they showed their sorrow that he missed. I mean, this is the country that we're living in. So when people are telling you that conservatives are a threat and we are extremists, show them the receipts. Show them the receipts how teachers, professors, local elected officials are speaking that way on social media, let alone what they're saying in private. This is my mindset. What is yours? What do you think about this whole rhetoric that Donald Trump is a threat to democracy? How has that made you feel over the last four years? What, what have you been able to uh, see out of this whole rhetoric? Why don't you answer all of this and more in the comment section below? Thank you for checking out the video today. And I'll see you in the next one.